Hey guys, this is Tyler here. I want to discuss here something and I, I this has been a topic I think that's been all over news and it's very relevant for everyone here, especially guys. And what this is is the what we can learn from law enforcement and the current case that's going on with police officer or former police officer Shelvin and, and George Floyd and basically some major things that you should consider especially for if you're a guy that's um seeking to go into law enforcement or even military for this matter and um just uh, kind of um how the public sector and especially the police has drastically changed in the past 20 to 30 years for some people this may seem political i don't define identify this as political i just think this is more of common sense for anyone who's looking at going into the police force or who's interested in these kind of areas this case is just a manifestation of how much the government in the state is just pushing people down especially men and white caucasian men probably the most currently in North America. Now, men as a whole are being targeted, no question. And unfortunately, the powers that be, the powers above, they always want to cause horizontal friction. And there's so many cases we see this in society. Uh, it's a very good media narrative. It helps drive um, economics in a certain way. It helps concentrate resources in a certain direction. And it just makes people oblivious to the big picture and the real problems at hand. And it's very interesting when we look at like this case with Shelvin, the problems, people who think that just going into the public sector, uh, whether that's police or military, and that this is, is a secure area. And I would argue and say it isn't. In fact, it, it may not just be on a personal level, but also your freedom could be at, at risk. And you, you could lose it and, and go to prison, get incarcerated. I don't know what's going to be the outcome with this Shelvin, but I have a strong feeling that he'll get some kind of prison sentence. What, what, whatever that is, it's difficult to call. Um, which I think is, it's terrible, honestly, but it is what it is. I mean, but as a cop, he wasn't doing everything perfect, but he was following protocol as well as he could with the circumstance of the situation and, and look what happened. I mean, yeah, this could have happened in other areas in like a private sector, but I, I think, um, especially being in this law enforcement, just put him at higher risk here and it really makes um it should make people question whether these uh public sector areas are secure for guys and i i would argue and say they're not in fact for guys that are in these kind of areas i would really recommend looking at alternatives um for a job for employment if possible or somehow parlaying the skills that you have in that job sector and transferring it over to something either that's private or that you can start a business in. You could be like this guy, you could be at extreme risk. And I, I, I find it so interesting, like especially in the US, it's such a very difficult balance because when we look at it, yes, there are no question, a lot of police that are definitely not good people. I mean, but there's others I think that are trying to be positive and be good in their jobs and it's very difficult because when you look at the demands of the state the government and if they are off just a little they can get reprimanded um obviously uh, fired very quickly or they can get arrested like shelvin and, and go to jail and face a trial this this is um the society how society is but on the other hand with like civilians they have such as um all these things that you have to keep in mind like um, they have to be both very aggressive, but at the same time, it can't, it, it can't be too much. I think the police are, are told to be aggressive, but then it's like you can't be to the point where it causes major damage. And this is 
kind of an oxymoron in my opinion it, it seems really ridiculous and um, when you look at the measures I mean um, this guy this cop he had been written up uh, many times negatively but prior to that he had received quite a few awards in his the earlier part of his career and really this guy I mean if you look at when he worked in security and then as a cop yes he maybe went too extreme in some cases but he really did try to follow the the pre measures that avoided um, grave and bodily harm. Um, he he tried to um, make sure it was within um, a certain limit or boundary. But when you look at um, people, may question this, but just re consider here that you you would want a cop that's willing to really go out there and and actually protect, as they say they do, and. Um, because we've seen like videos with these women police officers and I can't believe honestly how, how many of these women will basically fumble or will kind of run away or dog um, or if they're with another cop they'll flee the scene or just be very unreliable. Seeing a guy like Shelvin this is probably the guy that you'd want to have at your back if you were a cop but he was supposed to be protected by the police he worked for the public sector and look at his situation and this is a problem this of course extends to many other sectors in America in his case there were many factors unfortunately he was faced with just the fact of course he was a guy that was one of the biggest things and he was a cop and then I think his race ethnicity of course another thing and obviously bad time with the police and there, there was many other things that came into play here. We got to look at this and, and just question. When you look at how everything is, and I think people don't realize that with police department not to defend them, these guys kind of, they write a fine line because like I mentioned before, they have all this protocol, all these policies that they have to enforce by the state, by the government, but at the same time, they have to perform but they can't it, if it goes beyond like if there's death or fatality or any major issue then they're they can get charged and there's so many of these guys that are getting charged and when you look at the input of time and energy and how much these guys dedicate to this kind of area you, I mean one would have to think that a lot of guys that were going into this area have probably veered directions and, sh and shifted. I mean we see right now there's an unprecedented number of women now that are wanting to become cops which it surprises me and it doesn't surprise me at the same time. It, it's you know they tend to women tend to pick up on trends and fads later on but they also like to work for the government they like working for any state agency often and they're being enticed into these areas so obviously they have mandatory quotas and all these different practices to get them into the department and you know what I say let them go into the department and we can see what happens and, and how these police departments develop they obviously it's very unlikely they're going to be as competent as guys are in these jobs and furthermore does a guy want to put their life on on the line for these kind of causes um we could get a little more philosophical or deeper here but when we think of some of the causes too that cops are supposedly fighting i sometimes think that some of it's kind of staged behind the scenes so to speak a, a guy that discusses this one of many is david ike phenomenal philosopher and author from the uk and there's just a lot of things that i kind of question here and people have to guys have to ask do they want to be a stooge just used as fodder kind of similar to guy that is um like in the military sent to the front line now that's a very different cause a very different area being in the military compared to the police but some of the dangers do come into play and also many police were also in the military prior to that especially guys and so guys have to ask themselves do they want to put themselves in danger and defend the causes that they're supposed to defend and then get really and then get treated this way it's ridiculous honestly i mean many cops obviously have ptsd just like military guys especially in the inner cities and then look at they um, are at risk of going to prison and jail 
it, it's it's just this like state apparatus so if women won't go into these jobs into these areas they can gladly go into them and they can see what that brings about recently there's been a lot of women that have been trialed or about to go to trial for ponzi schemes in the business world some of these are massive schemes i've spoken about the famous Theranos, and there was another one out in california it was like a 400 million dollar scheme it was to get it was liquor license loans or liquor licenses this company that's kind of what they were doing or they claimed to do and it, it was a woman who led it and she ended up scheming she, it was like 400 million dollars she just got um, sentenced to 15 years and there's many other cases there's a well-known show called American Greed and more and more of these people c coming on are women so as they go into these roles that historically were mostly male dominated by taking a lot of responsibility and being given a lot of power they likewise have the responsibility and the consequences that come with that and people can see then like in place what what that will mean for society for them for their counterparts it, it's a huge risk matter and and i just see this be it just it, it's just going to develop in in this very bizarre way in the near future but you got to remember i mean if you're working in the public sector it could be police or military any area that you're going to be one of the first areas that's targeted that uh, has to deal with crap this sector has to go through in men especially like more base men i it's becoming just very undesirable and very risky also i think because like in the police you can both get in trouble on a personal level as they said and then you can go to jail you and get incarcerated for ridiculous reasons you have so many areas so many people that don't like you they don't like the um what what you're about and many other things now what will be interesting i i think in the future especially if the through quotas is when when police become more dominated by women will this shift the mindset of these people these criminals or other anyone in, in their sentiment towards police will make it po more positive more negative it, it only time will tell obviously no matter what it, if you go down that path you're possibly putting your freedom in, in, in grave danger perhaps some guys don't care they see it as just a a solid career option but in the era that we live in i think there's probably better areas and there's probably some way that you could parlay those skills into something that didn't put your life in danger and where you wouldn't have to deal with so many of these factors even outside of this area like in in certain job sectors now even if you're not at work you can still have problems i mean there's a very well-known case john mark dugan he lives in russia he fled to russia he was a cop in florida and you can think that you're safe that everything is fine but you start like opening your mouth and speaking freely they could come after you and, and there and the, this is also becoming more frequent i see like um freedom of speech is really being impended and, and public sector is one of the first areas where they really start going after people and different workplaces i mean any public sector university and in lower elementary middle high school there's virtually no um free speech for teachers or administration at this point and likewise this is extending into like police and military and it's just all over the place ultimately you have to remember as i've explained before that you're fighting a system you can think you could be the strongest uh, the biggest like rambo kind of guy and i um, think that you can just go head on but ultimately you're fighting the system and that's what's most important and this applies with any area of life for men nowadays especially in western countries greg adams he's one on youtube has really emphasized this that and, and this can apply to the dating environment or financial divorce system 
you're not just going up against that person, you're going up against the whole system and ultimately the system, if it's rigged a certain way, it will defeat you. Shelvin could have the best attorneys, the best defense in that, but he's ultimately going up against that system. So you wanna align yourself with a system that has your back and that won't destroy you or is less likely to destroy you. That That's what's going to help you as a guy. Because like if, if we look at the whole divorce court system, it's such a rigged game against men. This is a system. The, most of the U.S. major sectors, whether it's private or public, it's just, it, these are big systems you're going against. And you as an individual probably aren't going to defeat it. You're not going to be able to fight it. So you, you got to um, plan accordingly. But don't think that over time that system can change. It, it, it doesn't mean it's going to last long term. It may be better off to either go into a different sector or go to a different country or figure out what what you can handle. Because the other thing, too, is that you don't want to be a scapegoat here. I mean, this is a big thing that men were told like a long time ago, like more so in the military, but I think some guys that went into the police force, they felt this duty to their country and to be like a scapegoat and, and um, just sacrifice them. But do you want to sacrifice yourself for the, these kind of causes? Because just remember that the guy who's um, like the cop also is enforcing like um, when the when a man um, is going through a divorce or separation when the woman calls the police on the guy and um, he's being accused of child abuse or of spousal abuse and they're taking him away or when he has to pay child support and he was just unemployed and then he gets hauled off to jail or they garnish his wages or they revoke his um, like hunting license, all these things obviously play peace in. And I'm not saying, I mean, these people aren't the ones establishing this, uh, these policies and laws, but they do play a role in that. And so the, that's questions you have to ask yourself. Do you, do you want to be a part of that? And, and like I was mentioning with John Mark Dugan, this is the interesting thing about, and this is also the scary thing about governments and about the state as a whole, that they're very behind with. What John Mark Dugan was um, about, some of what he was about, I think presently with like Kaepernick, I, I do not like um, align myself with Kaepernick and don't like what he um, supported, but some of what John Mark Dugan advocated for kind of went in line with Kaepernick in a sense, certain areas. And, but yeah, John Mark Dugan was on the, was probably gonna be arrested and be charged with felonies and go to prison if he didn't flee the country. So you can see kind of how, like over time, the pendulum can swing. The um, government and state is very slow with things, with trends and they could support they could be totally against one thing like 20 years before it could be totally illegal and then 20 years later it could be completely un unrestricted and legal and i mean prime example of course is with cannabis this is a something that was very illegal like 40 years ago whereas now it's like in many states legal so it's just very like outdated often they're very slow these government apparatuses and you can't think for yourself often. You you have to like you're always going to have to think with everyone, wh whatever the system wants you to think. You you cannot think freely and operate freely and creatively. It's I think it's very restrictive personally. But this is, these are all factors to consider. But keep, give me your feedback here below.